It's VD, and welcome to the ND Network. I just, I'm not feeling well today, <laughs> so I just laughed on some lipstick. I don't have my glasses on because of my new light setting, because reflecting, and I just find that so disturbing. And I'm recording off my iPhone. I'm trying something new. We're just going to go with the flow, see what happens. Um, I am sitting here with a heating pad on my back because I tripped over one of my cats in the kitchen and face planted and oh, and then so much pain. <laughs> so we're just gonna try and get through this and I wanna get this video out. Um, we're doing the dark history series today. Um, I'm excited because I love history and this is kind of scandalous. <laughs> it's gross and it's twisted and it's called the Cadaver Synod. This is just before the rule of the harlots. Um, just so you understand, during this time, this is this is um, ninth century, and popes they were they did dime a dozen. They just went through popes. They did not last very long. If a pope was there for ten years, that's like record breaking. Popes were known to go missing, um, and different people were in charge of who actually became a pope. It was ruling families. It was women. The rule of harlots was actually um, a lot of women. Mistresses were, in were um, very powerful women decided and dictated who would be the next pope. And that's the way things were. And my cat just broke into my office. And before this, my kids were blowing air horns from New Year's Eve. And I just keep getting interrupted. We're just going to keep going with the flow. <laughs> Because, yeah, this is how it goes. Hi, Bouncer. He, he likes get interrupting and getting my videos. He's the one I tripped over. I, I know he feels really bad about this. I love you, bud. But <laughs> So, this is a this was dark times. And there um, was a very powerful woman. She was a duchess. And she um, was from families of Spoleta. She's a Spoletan. Um, it's kind of, you call her the deadly duchess. <laughs> she was deadly. She was very powerful. Her husband ruled over his area, Spoletta. And um, she, her name is Algatrude, Duchess Algatrude. She wanted her son to be the next, oh, my cat is scratching and patting at me. She wanted her son, who was just a child, a mere child at the time, to be named the next Holy Roman Emperor. Now, at this time, it was the popes who named and decided who would be the next Roman Emperor. Yeah. And things were pretty corrupt. Now, the Pope at this time, Pope Formosus, was actually one of the few non-corrupt Popes at this time. And this did not suit Algertrude very well. She was not happy about this because she thought she could get Formosus in line to get her son to be emperor. Uh -uh. Formosus is like, I am not that man. I have someone else I want to be. Pope. And the guy, you know, the reason why Formosus thought Arnulf um, should be, he's of another area, but his his thinking is Arnulf is a direct descendant of Charlemagne. Now, Charlemagne was actually the very first, as they call it, Holy Roman Emperor. So, since he's a descendant, Formosus thought I'm going to name this gentleman over here the next Holy Roman Emperor. Seems right. Oh no, Algertrude. <laughs> she did not like this. So she travels to the Vatican to confront Formosus. She's thinking she's got this. She's going to get her way. Didn't work out. So she's trying to leave. And Arnold is trying to make sure he secures his his place in the throne. He's coming with his army, headed to the Vatican, hoping to chase her back to Splenta, right? And if I'm mispronouncing things, forgive me. 
I, I do try and I'm going to screw up. I'm not perfect. And I don't mispronounce things because I want to be ignorant or that I want to do this. It's I do try, okay? So please forgive me for my mispronunciations. Um, I'm having such a hard time without my glasses. <sighs> forgive the light <laughs> things. But um, so she, um, she, I have a lot of notes here, but for Moses, he, um, he goes ahead and makes Alnof the the, the, role, the emperor, which really makes Algatrude pissed off. Now, Alnof wants to make sure that his reign is seated, so he starts heading to Spolenta. But while headed there, he somehow has a stroke. Yeah. So he immediately heads down up north to some allies and unfortunately dies. He, yeah, within weeks. I mean, it was like... <sniffs> Algatrude is like... <sniffs> swoops in, back to the Vatican. And pretty much forces Formosus to now make her son the next emperor. Then the bitch poisons the Pope. And doesn't get caught, of course, you know, because, yeah. He dies, right? So you're thinking, okay, bitch, your son's the emperor. You got him. He's dead. Move on, you know? No. And then she gets a man who becomes Stephen. I think he's the sixth or the seventh, uh, the seventh, Stephen the seventh Pope. Now, there's something a little, a little nitty gritty about Stephen. Stephen is local. I mean, insane. And the fact that he's Pope is just like, who? The guy is insane. And Algertrude uses this. She starts to convince him that Formosus, you know, hated him and was trying to keep him down and just gets Stephen on this hate, just hating on Formosus, who's dead. And Stephen's Pope, okay? Stephen, he should just be happy. He's Pope, you know? that That's not enough. That's not enough for Algatrude. And she convinces Stephen it's not enough for him either. No, 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 no. It's not enough. We have to ruin and undo everything that Formosus has done. And we're going to make it a big show. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, this is great, right? So... <laughs> She then has Stephen do another inauguration to definitely make sure her son is confirmed. Bam! He is the Holy Emperor. So it's done. Pope Stephen VII has sealed it again, making this all. This kid, yeah, he... I think he ended up dying at the age of 19 or 18. As, well, and it was, yeah. yeah it was, it's a sad story what happens to this poor child, but that's another. His mom is like, yay, deadly duchess here. Remember, she, she, she's vindictive. So, woohoo, she convinces him. And she brings up a past past issue. See, Hermosus has, he might have been a, known as a good man, but there's, there's something in his past. It's kind of dirty. You see, there was another Pope, Pope um, John, something I think he's the sixth. I, I'm not off the top of my head and I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read it. So sorry, I am legally blind. <laughs> 
and I see my eye doctor in a few weeks to get a new prescription. So we'll just, you know, we'll just go with this. But he also really hated Formosus because Formosus was a good guy and could be bribed. And he was young and he was coming up in the, um, up in the ranks. And so he did his trial trying to frame him and make him bad and got him excommunicated and exiled. So for Moses, yeah, he's robes gone, excommunicated out. And then when even John died, a new Pope came in and he's like, Hey, we're sorry. We know you're a good man. Come back to the art diocese, come back to the diocese. We'll take care of you. And it was just a few years later, then he became Pope. They were like, all's forgiven. Hey, you know, we're sorry about all this. Come back, come back in the fold. You know, and then, you know, he became Pope, right? Well, she's like, let's bring up those charges again. And let's bring up a little more. Let's, let's make this, let's make this really good. And nine months after his, he's dead, nine months. And remember these people <laughs> in this age, they didn't use anything to embalm people. They didn't. Have, they just dead body wrapped in rags. They exhumed his body, rotting corpse, stinky, stinking, falling apart, rotting corpse, dug it up. They had the poor little got young guys in the church. Yeah, dig it up, dress it up in all the finest of robes of the Pope and the crown hat, and placed him up on the Pope's throne. Ew! I mean, talk about contamination and grossness here. Set him up there and put him on trial. Now, all the other cardinals and bishops and everybody was scared to death of Pope Stephen VII by now. And they had to just go along with this. And sat here and watched as Stephen did kind of like a jury. Everyone watched, you know, those crazy talk shows and the guys all, woo, do it, putting on a big, huge show. This was him. Oh my gosh. And he did this and they had this young kid, young guy, like try and be his defense. The young, he wasn't even a bishop. He was low, low in the totem. And he was scared to defend Formosus well, because then he would get into trouble, you know? So he was like, okay, whatever. And I'll put up a pictures of the scene of some drawings. The morbid, <laughs> morbid here, folks. But they did this, this huge display. Then they cut off three, two or three of his fingers, yeah, that he used for benedictions. People would kiss his hands and he'd bless people. Cut those fingers off and they found him guilty of all sorts of crazy, uh, fraudulent, you know, it was all fraud. It was a fake. It was not, he, he'd not committed any kind of crimes, but crazy Steven here. Want it. And so every good thing that Formosus had done while he was Pope to help benefit people, all undone. All his good deeds, undone. Everything erased. Undo everything. Yes. Talk about vindictive. And wanted to, oh, it was like, oof. It's just, it's just disgusting. But done. I mean, let's just look down at a picture of it. Then they threw his bo body in the River Thames, where the river um, is where they would toss bodies because they are not smart in these times, not realizing they're polluting their own wa water. But that's where they would toss criminals because they don't deserve to be buried. They don't deserve the proper funeral. Toss the bodies into the river. 
Yeah, that's why everyone's getting sick. Your water that you you need for your food and to drink. <sighs> so, yeah. Fortunately, there were some monks who were brave enough to hire some fishermen to get that body back. And then he was secretly buried somewhere. Now, it wasn't much long afterwards that the Cardinals um, got enough bravery and had Stephen killed. While in prison, he was strangled. He ended up being in prison and then strangled. <laughs> he didn't live very long either. Um, it was like a few months after this whole shebang. And then Pope Formosus' body was then retrieved and buried back into St. Peter's um, place with all the others. And he was re-sanctified and all that stuff. But still, the Cadaver Synod happened. And it's a dark, dark part of history. And it's amazing what um, anger and vengeance and vindiction and manipulating someone who's completely insane, what can happen? Algatrude, you know, she, she and her family did not fare well either in history. And it's people, yeah, not so well. And that is a dark chapter in history. I don't want to get into too much more. Or this video is going to go too long. But if you want more information, I can go into it. But I'd like to get into another story and some other crazy things in history. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Hit that notification bell. You know the drill. And I hope to see you next time here at the NB Network. Thank you, and I love you all. Bye.